All right, everyone. So uh, we're going to jump into um, some of the more, uh, you know, sort of specific type uh, time value of money concepts. We're going to start with um, future value of a single amount. I'm just going to kind of work through all the different types of time value of money calculations that we might have and the different methods we can use to better understand them. Um, but hopefully once we kind of walk our walk our way through all these examples, you'll be You'll be ready for whatever I can throw at you on a test, or obviously, if you're not my class, whatever your professor might be able to throw at you, or if you're just learning on your own, uh, the kind of problems that you might come across. So um, let's kind of walk through this a bit. Uh, all right, so it's, I think it's important to illustrate the idea of a future amount. We're kind of using this same example that we used on the on the last lecture just to kind of watch it. And so, you know, we know that when we charge 10% compound interest on $10,000 for three years, uh, we already know that we solved that you would owe $13,310 at the end of three years. And so kind of, you know, seeing this in terms of a timeline might be helpful. And I've seen students a lot of times use timelines, even on a test, to kind of visualize, you know, where the money is moving in time to give, an idea, give them an idea of the kind of calculation they might need. And so uh, so for this one, we're going to kind of start, you know, kind of thinking about it. And, and really what you have is, you know, you start with $10,000. And then if you think about, you know, it moves through time and basically, you know, every single moment of every single day, it's growing, uh, but we're only compounding interest annually. And so basically it grows on the $10,000 for a year. And then at the end of the year, you have $11,000, but now that is the new basis for growth, right? So now the growth in the second year is based on the $11,000, which is why it jumps to 12,100. Now the 12,100 is the basis of growth during the third year which is why we get to 13,310. And so that's the whole idea is that every time, however often you compound interest, sort of that establishes the new base. And so you go from there. And so if it were semi-annual, you could imagine that you know $10,000 would grow for six months and somewhere in here we would stop and we have a new base and then it would grow again like that. Instead of being once for the whole year, it'd be six months, we stop, recalibrate and then grow again. And that's really how, how time value of money works. And so um, as you walk yourself through this, always be visualizing how the money is moving through time. When are we stopping to reset the compounding interest process? All right, so hopefully that helps. Okay, uh, so let's kind of get through some, some key terms when we talk about time value of money. So hopefully the illustration makes sense, but there are some terms we need to know. So first of all, you know, one term we're gonna use a lot of is N or number of periods. On your calculator, uh, the N is going to be. Um, I should probably have mine out. Actually, um, it's the it's the big N on your calculator. And so, sorry about that. I should have been a little more prepared. Um, so that's the first main concept. And so again, if we look at our calculator, uh, I think hopefully you can see it. Uh, if I can turn it the right way, that is our N right there. All right, and then um, the I slash Y on the calculator is also your I or your periodic interest rate. And, and then with all these on my calculator, I'm kind of going in this third row. So everything across that third row is really what we're looking at. And so, um, you know, the next one is the interest rate. And then from there, we have the present value um, on your calculator. It's also PV. Um, and that's really the lump sum today. So if there is a lump sum on one time amount today, uh, that is our present value. Uh, a payment is uh, a recurring payment at the end or at the beginning of each period. So um, in our example, we just did, there's no payment, but imagine if it was like $10,000 every year, then that payment, it's a recurring payment every single period. Uh, for a single period, present value payment, that kind of stuff, it really doesn't matter that much. But as soon as you get to multiple periods, then it obviously does because $10,000 you know, one time at the beginning is very different than $10,000 every single period uh, during the entire problem. Uh, and so it's really important and students tend to struggle in distinguishing when you have PV and when you have payment. Just the key is, is there something that's recurring over multiple periods? If that's the case, that's when you start using the payment function. Uh, otherwise, you're going to use PV or FV. And so FV is a future value or a lump sum amount at the end of N periods. And so again, the PV is a lump sum today. FV is some lump sum off into the future. All right, so let's talk first about how to apply an equation 
uh, in order to do a future value calculation. So we're um, for some of these simple ones, you're going to need to know the equation, you're going to need to know how to use tables, and you're going to need to know how to use your calculator. And so um, understanding how we get to the equation is an important thing, and obviously understanding the equation is an important thing. And so um, we're going to use a little bit of algebra in thinking about our problem. So if we think about what really is going on, we do a future value calculation. Uh, we start with $10,000, uh, and then we grow that $10,000 10%. Uh, over one year. So at the end of the year, you have 1.1 times 10. And then you take that new base amount and then you multiply it by 1.1. And then you take the the third, the second base or the third base account, uh, account and you multiply that by 1.1. And so that's kind of the algebraic process. That's the math behind it. And, you know, when you do that, if you kind of rewrite it, really what you see is you have, you know, this term three different times. And so we could just take that to the third power. So we're just cubing that term, um, and it's mathematically the same. So $10,000 times 1.1 cubed gives us 13,310. Um, but we can kind of generalize that. If you think about the major things that are going on, you have a, a three here, you have the 10% the here, you have uh, a PV here. And what you can do is rewrite it. And you can see that you know the $10,000, that is the present value. That's the lump sum at the beginning of the problem. The, the I is the interest rate in the problem, the periodic rate, which is 10%. And then the N is three. And so that general form equation can be applied to any future value calculation. And so you need to be able to apply that. Given a present value, an interest rate, and a number of periods, you need to be able to apply the equation and calculate the future value. And so hopefully that makes sense. It's not, it's, a, it's an equation that if you had a finance class, you've probably seen before. All right, so then the second approach, in addition to the equation, is using tables. All right, so um, we're going to introduce these tables, and, and the tables will be given to you on the test. And so you're going to have these tables. You need to be able to use them. Um, certain questions on the test will, will require that you use the tables. Uh, other questions are going to require that you use uh, equations, and others are going to require that you use your calculator. And then there are going to be some problems where you can use whatever approach you want. Uh, but as we walk through this, uh, using the tables. This is sometimes a little bit less familiar for folks, but I want to kind of show you where the information in the table comes from. And really it comes from this idea of a future value factor. And the factor really is that second term, you know, um, in the future value equation. Sorry, if we go back, um, you know, it's this, it's this term out here. That is what we call the future value factor. And so we kind of apply it to our situation. Uh, you can see that second term, the one plus I to the nth power. Um, if we kind of calculate that out, we can see this result, 1.3310. That is our future value factor. And so sort of looking at this situation, you know, so it, it's the factor that corresponds uh, to a present value um, you know, sort of being compounded into the future for three periods with the periodic interest rate of 10%. So our N is three and our I is 10. And so what we can do is we use the table to get to that factor. Because notice that this factor does not depend on the present value amount. It only depends on the interest rate and the number of periods. And so if we had a different interest rate and a different number of periods, the factor would change. Uh, and you could take this out however however far you want. Uh, but in this class, um, you know, we're just going to kind of focus on uh, basically 10 periods and 10% when we're using the table kind of as a maximum. Um, but know that you could expand it further beyond that if you needed to. So again, with this example, you're using the N of 3 and the I slash Y of 10% or the interest rate of 10% and figuring out the factor that applies to the problem. And so looking at this, uh, this is a normal factor table. This is very similar to what you'll see on the test or, or anywhere else that you use these tables. But you can see different interest rates across the top, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then different number of periods down at the bottom. Um, and so uh, basically what you do is you intersect the two. And so in this case, we know that our interest rate is 10% and we know our periods is three. And so we can see that that gives us a factor of one point. 3310. And so the table, rather than you having to calculate the factor, it gives it to you. Um, and so that 1.331 is the factor that we would apply. Uh, and so now let's figure out how we actually apply it.
And so again, we take the 1.331 and we apply it by multiplication to the present value. Um, and by the way, whenever you use factor tables, this is the way that you use them. You apply it through multiplication to some base amount. And we're going to talk about sometimes it's a future value, sometimes it's a present value, sometimes it's annuity, but whatever it is that you're trying to calculate um, or whatever it is you're trying to use as the basis of your calculation, um, that is what you apply the factor to. So in this case, obviously, we're applying it to that $10,000 present value. Um, and so when we apply it, we get, of course, you know, 13,310. All right. So now I want you to try to do this one on your own. Um, so again, using the factor table, what is the future value of $5,000 if 6% interest is compounded annually for five years? Uh, and so I'm going to kind of leave this up there for a second for you to kind of do it again, uh, $5,000, uh, 6% for five years. And so in your own mind, try to pick out the factor that would be applied. I'm going to kind of give you a second, of course, you know, pause it if you need more time, uh, but hopefully you've paused it and, and now we're kind of ready to jump back in. Um, and so the 6%, obviously that's the column. And then we see where it intersects with five as my N. And you can see that the factor that we would use is 1.3382. That is the factor. Uh, and then how do we apply that factor is the second piece. And hopefully uh, you're able to do that. Um, again, $5,000 is the basis, right? That is what we're applying the factor to uh, for a total of $6,691. And so the future value of $5,000 uh, of 6% interest compounded annually for five years. The future value is 6,691. Again, this is using the table. We would get the same thing if we used the equation, of course. Uh, and you're going to show you here in a minute. You get the same thing if you use your calculator. All right, so TVM or, or calculator approach to this calculation. So a calculator basically automates using that table and, and, and executes uh, any calculation or equation for you. And so uh, all the math that we've been doing is done behind the scenes with your calculator. Um, and so uh, it's a fairly, uh, you know, if you haven't used one before, it's not difficult, but um, there are some tricky things that you need to make sure you pay attention to. Uh, and so that's, uh, that's what we need to kind of walk through here. And so if you look at your, again, your five buttons, uh, you know, if you kind of think left, to right in that third row, you've got your N, your I slash Y, TV, payment, and FV. And so we're going to kind of walk through what each one means. Um, you know, the N is the number of periods again, the I slash Y is the periodic interest rate or the yield. The present value is present value, of course, payment is payment, uh, and FV is future value. So that's kind of what they mean. Um, and so um, as you're thinking about your problem, you always got to just think is, you know, from Thinking about inputting number of periods, I'm focused on N. If I'm focused on interest rate, it's I slash Y, and on and on we go. And again, it just takes practice. The more you use this, the, the more you're going to get used to it. Uh, and so let's kind of talk, start with that first example, um, you know, the easy one, the $10,000, you know, 10% annual interest for three years. You know, we know what the answer needs to be. It's going to be 13310 but let's use the calculator to actually do it. Uh, a couple things that you should do with your calculator just as we get started. Um, notice that mine has uh, four decimal places. Uh, to, to change yours, what you end up doing is you hit the second button, which is this kind of uh, button right up here, second. And then you do your um, format, which is the decimal place down at the bottom here. And you can see it says DEC. Mine says DEC equals four. Yours probably says DEC equals two if you haven't used it before. And the way that you change that is you just put in the number four, whatever number you want, and then you hit the enter button at the very top and you're gonna see DEC equals four and you now should see four decimal places. Um, the other thing you need to get used to with this calculator is uh, these five buttons here, they're permanent storage. So even if you turn off your calculator, um, it stays stored. Or even if you hit like clear work, uh, it stays stored. So the only way that you can kind of make sure you're starting fresh is to do what's called a clear TVM. And again, the way you do that is use that second button and then right above the FV, you'll see it says clear TVM. So you do that and now it zeroes everything out inside your calculator. Okay, so now the practical piece. Um, so now inputting the different things. And so let's talk about the N first. 
And so at their end, we're talking about, you know, the number of periods I slash Y is uh, interest rate, PV, payment, and FE. And so, you know, which one are we solving for is probably the first step. And of course, hopefully we know that we're solving for future value. Um, so we know that's where we're going to end up. That's the last thing we're going to do. Uh, and so we need to fill in the other four. In order to solve for the fifth, we have to fill in the other four. And so our N we know is three. And the way that you input things is you hit the number. So you'd hit like the number three. And then you hit where you want it to go, which is the N. So you hit the N. And then you'll see N equals three. Um, and so uh, that's so it's number, then the button. So number, then the button. That's how you input things into your calculator, the number and then the button. And so um, and so our N then is three. Um, sorry, I should have done something there. Um, I just realized this is kind of in the corner. Could be blocking you a little bit. I don't know if that changes your view. We'll see. Um, and so that's the N. And so then the I slash Y is 10%. Uh, now, uh, a little bit of thing here. If you put something into I slash Y, it knows you mean that it's a percentage. And so if I want to put 10%, I put the whole number 10. And then I hit the I slash Y. And you can see I slash Y equals 10. It's interpreting that as 10%. Um, if I put 0 0.1, now it thinks you mean 0.1%, which obviously is not what you mean. <laughs> and so you need to make sure that when you put uh, interest rates into the I slash Y button, you're using whole percentages. So it understands what you're trying to say. And so again, what you do is you put, you know, again, the number, then the button. So 10 and then the button, and you put in I slash Y is 10. Uh, and then PV, of course, is 10,000. So you type in 10,000, then you hit the PV button. Uh, in this case, I just use the positive. Uh, in this kind of a problem, it doesn't really matter much. Um, but I, you know, it, you know, because they're borrowing, I kind of, I think thinking about the sign is important, especially in the future, it's going to be important uh, for more, for uh, future time value money problems. Uh, but in this case, I think of it as, you know, I received $10,000 today. So that's a $10,000 uh, cash inflow. That's why it's positive. Um, and then of course, there's no recurring payment every period. So that's zero. And then we solve it's going to output a negative 13,310. And what it means, it's just mathematical. It's basically saying, well, if I'm given $10,000, I'm trying to equate, you know, sort of the other side of it, then I've got to pay 13,310. So it's always going to kind of do an opposite sign. If I'd put negative here, then this answer would have been positive. Um, it's just the way that it works. And, and like I said, in this kind of a problem, the sign doesn't matter. But in future problems, it could start to matter. So we just need to pay attention to the sign. And so I owe uh, $13,310 after three years. And so again, I, I hope that is um, something you can do. If you can't get the answer, um, you know, you kind of need to keep trying. It's probably something that you're doing with the input. Are you doing number then button? Um, and then when you, uh, sorry, I should have mentioned, when you get to the end, the way that you compute this um, I can't believe I didn't mention that. Um, so once you put everything in, I'm going to put everything into mine. Uh, 10,000 is my PV, zero is my payment. And then the last thing you do is you hit this compute button. So we have compute. And then whatever it is you want to compute, you hit that button. I want to compute FV. And so that's where I get my FV. I can't believe I didn't show you that. Um, but hopefully you see that now. So it's number, then button to input everything. And then compute and then whichever button you're trying to compute, in this case, the FB. All right, so, so pause and do this one. Um, and I'm just going to pause here for, for just a minute. Um, and then I want you to, to kind of complete this one on your own, see if you can get it. So again, pause here, do it on your own, get as far as you can, and then start the thing back up once you're ready. Uh, but again, hopefully you paused. And uh, the N, uh, of course, is five, because it's a five-year period. So you hit five then n so that inputs it in there uh the six percent interest rate hopefully again you you put in the whole number six so the number six then i slash y the pv is five thousand uh, dollars i did negative this time just because i thought of it more as an investment um like i put five thousand dollars into an account and then how much can i withdraw after six or after five years um but if you'd put positive that wouldn't necessarily be wrong uh and then the payment is zero and then finally we calculate it of course we should get uh, the positive 6,691, uh, we knew that would be the answer. We knew that would be the number. And so um, so hopefully that's what you got as well. So um, that is uh, the future value of a single amount. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop here. I'm going to try to keep each of these at, you know, 15 minutes or so. Um, and then, uh, and then we'll, we'll pick it up from there.